So the Helios 500 with the Core i9 is an impressive machine, but at 2,500 bucks, I think the Core i7 config is the one most folks will be looking at. And really, it's not like it's any less impressive, it's just, you know, 500 bucks less. Anyways, the 500 is the gamer's laptop. Just looking at it screams, I love making little kids shriek at the top of their lungs after a clean headshot. Now, it is an all-plastic build, which honestly isn't surprising, but it's built solid as a brick. Little to no creaks and cracks, um, and there's lots of angles and lines, like lots. It's a fairly busy design, very gamer-centric. And you can say goodbye to that red and black colorway. This time, Asus decided to go with black and blue. Personally, I'd prefer to see like an all-black build one day, but in the meantime, it's just nice to see a lot less red and black in the PC gaming world. We've got big ass vents everywhere, along with LED lighting on the deck and backlit RGB keyboard. It's essentially the same, I'm gonna make this game my bitch design style like past Acer Predator laptops. For IO on the left, we've got a gigabit ethernet port from Killer Networking, USB 3.0 and two Thunderbolt 3 ports. Mmm, yes please, thank you. And then on the right, we've got a couple of audio ports and two more USB 3.0 ports. And then again, on the back, we've got an HDMI display port and power port. Uh, I would really like to see Acer figure out a way to move more of the I.O. to the back considering it's big enough to park a car in, but it's not the end of the world, so whatever. Maintenance or upgradeability access is really nice on the 500. Like, it'll get naked for you and let you touch all its parts. Yeah, baby. But just like a person, you gotta work for it. So pulling down, or sorry, pulling off the first panel, we get access to the battery, the existing NVMe drive, along with an extra unpopulated PCIe slot, the hard drive, and two unpopulated DIMM slots to chuck in a couple more sticks of RAM if you wanted. But if you really want to get all up in there, you gotta put in work, son, otherwise known as removing the rest of the screws. And once you do, we get access to the killer networking wireless card and fans. But if you wanted to access the two pre-populated RAM slots, Slots, you're gonna have to do some more digging to get to the other side of the motherboard. But let's just take a moment to appreciate the separate dedicated CPU and GPU cooling fans, the copper key pipes that provide some pretty rad cooling capabilities, relative ease of access to both the CPU and GPU, as well as just general access to everything. So really good work on Acer's part there. I mean, you want tech porn? Here it is. Grab the lotion and tissues, boys. The 74 watt hour battery isn't gonna do you a whole lot on a gaming laptop like this because like, science, but if you do need to use it, you're looking at about three or so hours of productivity and about an hour and a half of gaming. The display's bezels are as massive as Reese Witherspoon's forehead, but it does sort of go with the rest of the 500's chunky design, so I'll give it a pass. It's got a 17-inch 1080p IPS display with G-Sync and 144Hz refresh rate. It gets nice and bright at 300 nits, although I've seen some reviews that pegged it at around 329, and colors are good at 91% sRGB and 59% Adobe RGB. So great for content consumption and even better for gaming. Actually, pretty amazing for gaming. Love the keyboard of the 500. It's full size, has blue trim around the walls and arrow keys. The key size is great. The spacing is great. The font doesn't look stupid. And the 1.6 mil key travel distance feels awesome. Although because it's a rubber dome switch, the actuation point is a little softer than I would have preferred, but it still feels awesome to type on. As you can see, it is backlit, but limited to four zones, which you can adjust in the Predator Sense app, but there's no per key lighting customization or even animations. It's also a bit dim for my liking and unfortunately can't be increased. Uh, I would have liked to see the touchpad just a bit bigger considering how much real estate we're working with here, but with Windows Precision Drivers, a smooth surface, great feeling left and right buttons, and blue LED trim, which I think is a neat touch, it's been great. Uh, there's also some programmable keys along the top that you can set up as hotkeys or macros with up to three profiles, which is actually coming pretty handy while testing this guy. The downward facing stereo speakers are helped a bit in the mids and lows with the itty bitty subwoofer, giving the audio an overall great sound with volume that'll fill a room. Now, gaming performance is only as good as the components you use and the way they're managed. My review unit config comes with the i7 8750H, 16 gigs of RAM, expandable up to 64, a slightly overclockable GTX 1070, a 256 gig NVMe SSD and a one terabyte 5400 RPM mass storage drive. Thermal management on the 500, pfft, forget about it, forget about it, forget about it. 
I suck. Thermals have been great, never moving past 87 Celsius on the CPU while gaming and 65 on the GPU, all with Acer's Cool Boost off. But with Cool Boost on, I was seeing awesome drops with 72 on the CPU and 53 on the GPU. Granted, with Cool Boost on, it's loud as hell, but if you've got some closed back headphones, you won't hear a bloody thing, except, you know, little kids screaming at the top of their lungs after you headshot them, which I might add is a lot more fun than you'd think. <laughs> so we've got some real impressive cooling capabilities here. Uh, thermal throttling certainly isn't something you'll have to worry about. It's the power limit throttling you gotta look out for. Uh, this is actually my second review unit because I didn't believe that the power limit throttling to the degree it throttles at was by design. Turns out, it is. Uh, as soon as I started stress testing it, I saw the CPU speed drop from 3.9 gigahertz down to 3.3 and sometimes much lower. Uh, for instance, in more CPU heavy games like Battlefield 1, uh, speeds only got as high as like 3.2, but switching over to something like Fortnite or Overwatch, speeds stayed pegged at 3.9 or close to it. I was able to mitigate this a little bit by undervolting it using Intel XTU, which saw a more or less stable 3.6 gigahertz. I'm sure it can be improved a little further with some more tweaking using apps like throttle stop but I ain't got time for that shit. Anyways, I was super bummed to see the power throttling on a laptop with these specs and cooling capabilities. I think if Acer fixed the throttling while well, we'd see higher temps, with cool boost on we'd still be well within thermal limits and see improved performance in games. Either way you look at it, it's still a baller gaming laptop that'll run almost any AAA title at high or max settings. The 144 Hz G-Sync monitor is rad and improves the gaming experience like tenfold, and you gotta love the easy maintenance and upgrade access. As in, take your shirt off and tweak your nips, love. Anyways, that about does it for this one. Uh, like usual, I'll be hanging out in the comments for a bit, so I'll see you guys there. But if you like the video, show me some love with that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe for new videos every week. But thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you all in the next one. Cheers.